that you would open these words to our hearts and help us understand the scripture so that we can apply it and use it in our lives to glorify you. In your holy name we pray. Amen. So, we have to look at our own lives. To understand what makes a good leader, I believe that first we need to understand how we lead. What do we do? What is it about us that makes us qualified or puts us in a position of leadership? Well, for many of us, you lead every day in your family. Whether it's your kids or your grandkids, whether it's your neighbors or people in your neighborhood. They look to us for guidance. They look to us for ways to live, ways to do things. As Christians in this world, we lead every day just by being who we are. And the example we share, the example we show, is one of the most important things that we can do in our lives. In our congregation gathered here today, I know we have leaders. We have teachers, we have Boy Scout leaders, we have Girl Scout leaders, we have police officers, we have foremen on jobs. You people that are all gathered here today, all lead a very special group of people. For most of us, we lead children in some way. I started the children's message today by asking who they lead to for examples in their lives. And I find it humorous in our house, but at the same time, it's a question I ask myself is, should I be doing this in front of my kids? And usually the answer comes to me as a no when I hear my wife saying, you kids should not be doing that. Don't listen to your dad. You see, those are trivial things oftentimes. Whether it's mowing the grass, driving a little bit too fast, using a chainsaw in an unprescribed manner. You know, there are things that we look at and say, that's life. The more important things that we have to look at in our lives are how do we lead in faith? How do we lead in our lives to teach people about Jesus Christ? How do we lead in a way that when people see us, hear us, and understand us, that they come to know Jesus Christ as their Savior as well. Well, Paul's words to us today start with this, follow God's example. Now, if we could all do that every single day, I think we would pretty much end the sermon right here. Follow God's example. God led numerous people throughout time. In the Old Testament, we can look at God lead the nation of Israel through all kinds of trials and tribulations. God continued to lead. God continued to be constant. God continued to lead in love. God continued to lead with hope. God continued to lead with grace. We move into the New Testament and we see God lead with the example of sending His Son to save us. God, without question, sent Jesus Christ to live among us, to teach us, but ultimately to die for us. God's example shows us that leadership is all about giving to help other people come to know. As we look at that today, it says, Therefore, as dearly loved children, walk in the way of love. So there's three things I have today that I've listed that we need to look at. The first one is to love unconditionally. That's not as easy as it sounds. To love unconditionally means to love without question. We don't question people around us. We don't question people in our lives. Are we going to get hurt? Probably. Are things always going to go our way? Most certainly not. Are people going to fall down that we've been working with? Guaranteed. We need to love, though, unconditionally. When I was writing this, I was thinking, what best suits us for loving unconditionally? I can only think to an example of a child and a parent relationship. See, children can do almost anything, and parents are going to continue to love. They said, in my house, it's usually minor things, but my dad smiles when I tell him the kids lost all my tools in the garage. Or the kids took something out of my house and broke it. Or the kids smashed something that I was just so close to being done with. We have two choices in those situations. We can get angry, or we can love. God calls us to walk in His path as leaders and to love. Love unconditionally. It's probably the hardest charge of any of the things that we learn as leaders is to love unconditionally. But that's what God does. 
In the Old Testament, we look back, God loved unconditionally. He'd say to the nation of Israel, go here, do this. The nation of Israel would say, no, we're going to go there and do that. And they would fall down and God would say, okay, I'll bring you back. Now go here and do this. And the nation would say, well, we like it better over here doing that. And they would fall down. And God would say, well, I'll take you up and come on back to my kids. Friends, we need to be that way with people that we meet in our lives. The people that we lead, the people around us, people that work with us, people that are in our community, people that, that see us. We need to love unconditionally. Number two, we need to give up ourselves. We continue in our scripture, it says, Christ loved us and gave himself up for us. But we need to give ourselves up. And to this is a challenge. It's a challenge of time. It's a challenge of effort. It's a challenge of questioning what we want to do versus what we know we need to do because God is calling us. It's again not an easy decision to make. Maybe you have somebody in your community that needs to see you, that needs to hear you, that needs to talk to you. And you know your favorite TV show is on. And we turn on the TV and we think, wow, oh, I can sit here in my warm house. And I can watch Mega Machines. Or I can go down the road and talk to my neighbors because I know they need help. Friends, Christ calls us to give up of ourselves. The, the best leader in all of time gave up his life to help others. Don't you think that was a decision Jesus made? Sitting in a garden thinking, man, I could probably call on God and I could go over there and hang out tomorrow, the sunshine. Or I could say, Father, I'm here for this. And I can walk to the cross. And Jesus did that. He gave himself up and he walked to the cross. And friends, we're called to give up ourselves as leaders in the world. We're called to give up time, to give up talent, to give up energy. Why do we do it? We do it because God gave it up for us. And as leaders in faith, we're called to do the same. And then the third point I have is to live with grace. Well, how do we live with grace? Well, I work with some people that it wouldn't matter what happened. It was the worst day of the world. doesn't matter what's going on. It's always bad. It's always somebody's fault. It's always the sky's falling. When I look at living with grace, I look at living with the opposite of that. In everything, finding a good part. In every day, finding a reason to thank God for what we've been given. In every moment of life, looking to heaven and saying, Father, I may not understand this, but I thank you for it. Living with grace is giving people God in who we are and how we do. Living with grace is showing people that no matter what circumstance we find ourselves in, we thank God for it. <coughs> And we continue to work hard to share His love. When I look at living with grace, I look at going and sharing with those in need, giving to people that don't have what we have, sacrificing part of ourselves so that they can have more. <clears throat> living with grace is all about understanding God's example. So friends, today I'm calling us all to be leaders. In a few moments, we're going to invite some people forward, and we're going to pray for them. We're going to ordain them to be leaders in this congregation, people that we've chosen through prayer to help lead us. But that doesn't put aside the rest of us as leaders here in Eastbrook and in our community and in our jobs. We're all called to lead every day. We're all called to walk out of our houses with smiles and with praise of thanksgiving for our God. We're all called to share His hope and His love with the people we meet. It says at the end, Christ loved us and gave Himself up for us as a fragrant offering and a sacrifice to God. Friends, Jesus Christ did what He did for us in sacrifice. Jesus Christ did what He did for us in love. Jesus Christ did what He did for us in humility. Jesus Christ did what He did for us in grace. To be leaders, we simply have to follow God's example. I say simply. I know it's not that easy. It's a challenge every day. It's a challenge that we as leaders need to hold each other accountable to. To lift each other up. To pray for one another. And that's the other part of the leaders that we're going to bring forward today. 
We're going to ask the congregation to support them, to pray for them, to help them lead. The same I'm going to ask of our church today, to daily pray for one another. To daily pray for each other that as we go into our jobs, as we live our lives, as we spend time in this community, to pray for one another. That for each of us, wherever we may be in this world, we live God's examples. Today, friends, go into this world, leaders. Keep your heads high. God blessed us with amazing gifts and talents. God gave us the ultimate gift. God gave us the example of a true leader in Jesus Christ. He did everything he could, including giving his life to save us. It is our job to honor him by doing the best we can to live as leaders and his example in our lives. Let's pray. Dear Father, we come to you today and pray that you would be with us and guide us, that you would help us as leaders in this world to share your love with the people we meet, to lead in your way. Father, we pray today that you would be with us and guide us. In your name we pray. Amen. Time of year to bring on new elders and new deacons. New people that are going to help lead our church and our congregation. This year, maybe perhaps more than any other year, we have new challenges. New things we need to look at. We're part of a new denomination. One that's growing rapidly. This Friday, we accepted our 104th congregation in the ego. In just under a year, we went from zero to 104. God's working and moving. But God works and moves by using us, his people, to lead, to guide, to grow, to share. Part of the job we're going to have for our leaders who are coming on today and those who are still serving is to help our congregation shape and form our new path as we move into this new group, as we become a part of this new congregation, new domination, living and growing in our ideals. We have a goal in five years to baptize more than we bury as a church and as a community. It's a big goal. Our leaders are going to need our prayers. Our leaders are going to need our support to do those things. But most importantly, we as a church are going to need to focus on God and share His love and His hope. Part of bringing on new leaders means saying goodbye to those that have served faithfully. Judy Chen stepping down uh, today. Her six years has been up. She served faithfully as our clerk of session for those six years and has done a great job. She's going to be missed on session as... Uh, somebody that's always constant, always faithful, always there, always helping, and uh, praying for us. And Judy, thank you very much for your time. Uh, big shoes to fill, and we appreciate everything you've done for us there. Jason Vogel stepping down as a deacon this year to uh, take some time back with work and things. His schedule's gotten really busy, but he's served faithfully. Jason's been at our dinners. He's been visiting our, our elderly and our shut-ins, and it's been a great uh, pleasure and a great time to have him as part of the deacon. And Jason, we thank you very much for your service there. Keep in mind, you are always an elder and always a deacon once you're ordained, and we'll be calling again to bring you back into that group uh, in the future. But today we welcome two new uh, new members to our ordained team here at the church. Uh, Mike Rogers will be ordained today as an elder for the first time, and Travis Sarver is going to be ordained as a deacon today to start the new role of serving in our church. So at this time, I'd like to invite Mike and Travis forward, as well as Tim Redfoot, who's going back on as another term, if you three can come forward. Lisa's uh, re-signing as a deacon for her second term, but unfortunately Lisa had a tooth pulled this week and her mouth is not healing as rapidly as she would like it to. So she's at home with some uh, added help from some medication the doctor gave her, and we'll get her to answer questions here in the coming days. So the questions before us are, well, though we have different gifts, together we are a ministry of reconciliation led by the risen Christ. We work and pray to make His church useful in the world. And we call men and women to faith so that in the very end every knee shall bow and every tongue confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of the Father. Within our common ministry, some members are chosen for particular work as pastors, elders, or deacons. We recognize these special ministries remembering that our Lord Jesus said, Whoever among you wants to be great must become the servant of all. And if He wants to be first among you, he must be the slave to all. Today, if you would, please answer these questions that we have for you. Do you believe in one God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit? And do you boldly declare Jesus Christ as Savior and Lord, and acknowledge Him Lord of all and Head of the Church? If so, answer, we do. We do. Do you believe the Scriptures of the Old and New Testament to be the Word of God, and inspired by the Holy Spirit, the unique witness of Jesus Christ, the authority for Christian faith and life, do you? 
Do you receive and adopt without hesitation the essential tenets of the ECL as a reliable exposition of what Scripture teaches us to do and believe? And will you be guided by them in your life and in your ministry? Will you? Relying on the Holy Spirit, do you humbly submit to God's call in your life, committing yourself to God's mission and fulfilling your ministry in obedience to Jesus Christ under the authority of Scripture and guided by our confessions? Do you? Will you be governed by ecos, polity, and discipline? And will you be accountable to your fellow elders, deacons, and pastor as you lead? Will you? Do you promise to be faithful in maintaining the truth of the gospel and the peace, unity, and purity of the church? Do you? Will you pray for and seek to serve the people with energy, intelligence, imagination, and love? Will you? This question is for Mike and Tim. Will you be faithful elders, watching over the people in their worship, nurture, and service to God? Will you? I will. Travis, will you be a faithful deacon, serving the people, <coughs> urging concern, and directing the people's help to those in need? Will you? I will. <coughs> to our congregation, do you, the covenant partners of this congregation, accept Mike Rogers and Tim Roadfoot as elders, and Travis Sarver as deacon? Chosen by God through the voice of this congregation to lead you in the way of Jesus Christ, according to the Word of God and the Constitution of ECO. If so, answer, we do. Amen. As a representative of ECO today, I declare to you these elders and these deacons are now installed to lead you in the way of Jesus Christ, according to the Word of God and the Constitution of ECO. As we gather here this morning, one of the great traditions in faith is the laying on of hands. As we ordain new and first-time elders and deacons, we take time to lay on hands, to pass the Spirit, and to share the love of God with those. So at this time, I'm going to ask Mike and Travis to kneel before us, and I'm going to ask anybody that's ordained in this church as an elder or deacon, whether you're visiting with us or not, if you're an elder or deacon and you've been ordained, I would invite you to come forward and lay on hands as we pray for these uh, new men as they join our church to lead. So if you would, please come forward if you feel so good. Dear Father, as ambassadors of faith, we pray that you will send your spirit to guide Mike and Travis in their roles in this community of faith. Father, that as they become today ordained elders and deacons in your church, that you would guide them with your spirit, that you would fill them with your will, that you would share with them your wisdom as they go into this community to lead not just here, but to lead everywhere they go as your leaders in your church. Father, today we pray that you will bless them, that you will use them and their talents for your faith for your sharing of your work. Father, today we pray that you will be with them and guide them. In the name of your Son, Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen. Amen. This time I would like to welcome Mike and Travis, and thank you, Tim, for joining us again for another three years. Would you please welcome them on as our new elders. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. 